Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Kevin Wenzel. I'm the manager of public transportation for the city of Leduc and also the chair of the Prairie Provinces and Territories chapter of the Canadian Urban Transit Association. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here to serve as MC for this important announcement. I would like to welcome our guests, the Honourable Amarjeet Sohi, Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, the Honourable Brian Mason, Provincial Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation, His Worship Don Iveson, Mayor of Edmonton, and Chief Tony Alexis from the Alexis Nakoda Sioux Nation. I know we have many MLAs, Mayors, Reeves, and Council members present and other special guests, so welcome everyone. Today's announcement will see the signing of a bilateral agreement between the provincial and federal governments for the Public Transit Infrastructure Fund and the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. This announcement highlights the importance of urban public transit and safe and effective water and wastewater infrastructure in Alberta. As a representative of CUDA, I am pleased to be here for the step forward in support of public transportation options in our province. Public transit sir, provides a framework for livable, efficient and healthy communities like Edmonton and my community of Leduc and Leduc County. These long-term investments offered by the provincial and federal governments will better communities economically, socially and environmentally for years to come, resulting in stronger communities. And with that, I'd like to invite the Honourable Amarjeet Sohi, Canada's Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, to the front to provide his comments. Well, thank you, uh, Kevin, and it's, it's nice to see uh, uh, the municipal leaders uh, as well as the uh, uh, associations that represent uh, uh, municipalities and definitely, definitely so delighted to see uh, Chief Alexis. Uh, thank you so much, Chief, uh, for coming here. And I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Randy Boys. No, actually, this is his writing, isn't it? It is. There you go. Right, so <laughs> he represents the legislature in, the, in Ottawa, right? No, no, not at all. No, no. Uh, for, uh, uh, for me, it is absolutely, absolutely uh, uh, historic day uh, to to be here with uh, with two of my closest friends, uh, Mayor Don Abison. Uh, as you know, uh, both of us worked together on council. We were both elected uh, at the same time, and uh, and uh, Minister Mason. Uh, we have a kind of a very uh, un not a unique right, but uh, we traveled on same paths, uh, different times. Uh, we were both. Uh, City councillors, uh, uh, and uh, uh, then we, before that we were both bus drivers, and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Now, now both of us, both of us are infrastructure ministers, right? So it's uh, it's it's nice, but it's absolutely, absolutely. I'm delighted to uh, uh, come together to uh, to announce uh, that we have reached uh, an agreement on phase one of investing in Canada the Government of Canada's 10-year infrastructure plan. This agreement will provide combined federal, provincial, and municipal funding of more than $1.08 billion to Alberta's municipalities to support public transit and water and wastewater infrastructure projects. Government of Canada is providing 50% of these funds. This marks the 10th agreement we have signed with our provincial and territorial partners in the last three months. As of today, over $5.1 billion are flowing to provinces and territories who have signed onto agreement for public transit as well as clean water and wastewater fund. More announcements are coming soon, as well as more projects to be added to provinces' lists. Government of Canada recognizes that we need a solid partnership with all orders of government to accomplish our common goals of building strong, inclusive, and sustainable communities. And that focus on collaboration with partners extends to our infrastructure plan. As you know, we put forward a plan to invest more than $120 billion over the next 10 years, including $60 billion of new money for public transit green infrastructure and social infrastructure. This plan not only creates good jobs and encourages 
sustained economic growth. It will continue to build communities where we want to work, live, play, and raise a family. We consulted and crafted phase one of our plan in the response to the most urgent needs, laying the foundation to build public infrastructure for tomorrow. What we heard is that now we need to address the infrastructure deficit our communities have been dealing with for decades. That is why phase one is focused on the repairing and improving existing transit infrastructure, like the 46 transit projects uh, right here in Edmonton, including providing buses, LRT cars, and significant infrastructure upgrades, as well as supporting critical planning for city's next LRT expansion. With projects such as improvements to north, uh, two northeast LRT crossings, upgrades to safety features at various LRT stations, and equipping buses with onboard cameras, this means safe travel for drivers, riders, and pedestrians as well. Phase one will also strengthen and secure, uh, strengthen and secure our water systems with projects like the regional water supply system extension in Bonneville and the construction of over 20 kilometers of regional water line from Lloyd Minister to uh, Kitskari. These and 15 other projects announced today will give people in communities across Alberta access to clean and reliable drinking water, supporting future growth and quality of life and better protect the local environment. Today's agreement means projects that are not only shovel ready, but also shovel worthy can proceed without delay. And we made these programs retroactive to April 1st of this year to ensure a productive 2016 construction season. We have already approved an initial list of 66 projects representing a significant portion of Alberta province's uh, funding allocation. Additional projects will be identified in the near future and work will get underway shortly so your communities can see the benefits sooner rather than later. This agreement marks a new way of working in partnership and using infrastructure investments to make our communities stronger. In fact, we are committed to consulting with and listening to Canadians, our stakeholders and partners to gain an understanding on how best to meet the needs of Canadians and best position Canada's economy for the future. On July 20th, we launched InfraConsult, a public engagement forum where Canadians can share their thoughts and ideas how the government of Canada should invest in public infrastructure. The response we have seen so far has been very impressive, and we look forward to receiving more. In further shaping the development of the Phase 2, which is our long-term plan, I will join my provincial and territorial counterparts for the first federal provincial territorial meeting on infrastructure here in Edmonton next week on September 6th and 7th. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities will also be participating. The goal of this meeting is to gain a collective view on what we have accomplished so far, including what is working well and what we can do to improve things and how we can make sure we deliver results for the communities. As part of the consultation process, we're also engaging with indigenous leaders about the specific infrastructure needs in indigenous communities, including the need to improve drinking water systems. This is part of Government of Canada's commitment to the renewed nation-to-nation -nation relationship with our indigenous peoples. Again, what a pleasure it is for me and Randy to announce this agreement with Alberta for phase one of the infrastructure plan. Please know this is the down payment. More is, more is to come for the next 10 years. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Minister. We all know that reliable access to clean drinking water and safe and efficient wastewater treatment facilities are vital to the quality of life for all Albertans. This is another reason why this bilateral agreement is so important. 
I would now like to introduce Honorable Brian Mason, Alberta's Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation. Minister. Thank you very much. I just want to check this and make sure I'm not going to be re-delivering Minister Sohi's speech. So uh, it's wonderful to see everyone here, uh, Chief Alexis and Mayors, Reeves, Councillors um, and MLAs uh, and Members of Parliament. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a good show uh, of support for the work that we do together as orders of government. And Canada works best when all three orders of government cooperate to deliver the services uh, and the projects that Canadians need. And this is, in my view, an excellent uh, example of that. So welcome, Minister Sohi, Mayor Iveson, and thanks, Kevin, very much for that introduction. The Canadian uh, Urban Transit Association has and continues to be an important partner for us here in Alberta as we continue to support public transportation right across the province. And I'm pleased to be joined today by mayors and representatives from communities across Alberta and some of my fellow government MLAs. And uh, as I mentioned, very pleased to have our special guest here, uh, Chief Tony Alexis of the Alexis Nakoda Sioux Nation. We're happy to have all of you join us here at the Legislature and, and on the traditional lands of Treaty 6 First Nations people. Minister Sohi, we appreciate the federal government's support for Alberta's infrastructure initiatives. And this is no small investment. The first phase of your commitment totaling more than $543 million for infrastructure in the province of Alberta. It supports Alberta's jobs plan by helping to create good paying jobs for Albertans during construction and more over the longer term in maintenance and operations. This agreement speaks to our shared priorities, broader and better public transportation, clean drinking water and improved wastewater treatment. And that's why our government has increased our own financial commitment in these priority areas. These initiatives not only help Albertans get back to work, they also mean better services and better quality of life for everyone. Our government has been unwavering in our support for critical clean drinking water projects and improved water and wastewater treatment facilities across Alberta. I want to stress these critical priorities, the creation of jobs and improving the quality of life for Albertans. And our government is committed to helping make that happen through major infrastructure spending that creates good, good paying uh, jobs. We also want to support services that improve the quality of life of Albertans. We made a major commitment in Budget 2016 to help Alberta's smaller communities develop the water infrastructure needed to meet local needs, promising $595 million in water and wastewater funding over the next five years. Our contribution to support these projects will come from these funds through the Water for Life grant program. Our government has been working closely with our municipal partners across Alberta to identify the water projects needed in local communities. Earlier this summer, I announced more than $117 million in grants for water projects across the province. And today's provincial federal agreement means more municipalities will be able to begin construction of many important water pro projects across Alberta, projects which otherwise might not have moved forward at this time. These investments provide better access to the most important resource, clean drinking water. They also allow for improved wastewater facilities, which will help to protect Alberta's lakes and rivers. This infrastructure is vital for the health and well-being of Alberta's families and the environment, and it's critical to future economic growth in our province. I'd like to draw attention to two of these water projects. The West Interlake District Regional Water Commission water line expansion from Onaway to Gunn. And there you go. It's a good project, eh, Lauren? <laughs> Uh, and the Cold Lake Regional Utility Services Commission's Regional Water Supply Extension. Just might say we should try and go for some shorter names for some of these projects. Um, so the first project will extend clean drinking water to the border of Alexis First Nation. We're also working closely with the Cold Lake Regional Utility Services Commission and Cold Lake First Nation to achieve the same goal there. 
These are examples of our government's promise to develop a respectful relationship with Alberta's Indigenous people and to help improve the quality of life that they enjoy. I want to be clear that the list of projects for both water and transit funding continues to be developed. It is not comprehensive. It's not finished. So what is being released today represents only a portion of these potential projects. Our government has been forging a path towards improved, affordable and accessible public transportation. We recognize the need to improve public transit options so that people can get to work, to job interviews, to school, to medical appointments and to all of the places that we all have to travel in our daily lives. We know that supporting transit in municipalities helps more people choose public transit over driving. And that means fewer cars on the road, which leads to reduced congestion on our roads and a reduction in harmful greenhouse gas emissions. This too is about improving the quality of life for Albertans. While there will be more projects announced in coming weeks, today are pleased to be, we're pleased to be contributing provincial support for crit critical transit projects in Edmonton and Calgary on the initial public transit infrastructure funding list. But none of this could happen without partnership and collaboration with Alberta's municipal leaders. I can tell you that the vast majority of the leaders across the province are pleased to see this new funding from both the federal government and from our, their own provincial government. Just yesterday, our government's third call for applications for the remaining $424 million in the Green Transit Incentive Program closed. Last month, we approved expanded criteria for this program to match the federal government's funding criteria so that Alberta municipalities would have access to both provincial and federal funds. Both of these changes will allow more transit projects to be supported across our province. And we look forward to announcing more approved projects and funding in the coming weeks. At the same time, Alberta Transportation is developing the criteria for a new municipal transit initiatives program our government announced last year. This program will, will be based on the feedback received during a recent public and stakeholder engagement. It will make sense for Alberta because Albertans have directly helped design the program. In closing, today's agreement isn't just about transit and water, it's about the future. In Alberta, we want a future that provides a good quality of life and includes supporting our environment, a key part of our government's climate leadership plan. Improved water treatment facilities will help to protect Alberta's lands, its lakes and its rivers. Improved transit means lower greenhouse gas emissions and affordable public transportation options for Albertans. So I want to thank particularly the federal government for their support in this initiative. Our collaboration combined with the work that we are doing with our municipal partners can only lead to a better future while helping Albertans today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. I would now like to invite His Worship Don Iveson, Mayor of Edmonton, to share his thoughts on the importance of this agreement and what it means for the residents of our provincial capital. Mayor Iveson. Well, thanks, Kevin, and it's always a privilege to join with colleagues from all orders of government, including First Nations, here in the legislature in the heart of Treaty 6 territory. I am so thrilled to be here, not just as Mayor of the City of Edmonton, but as Chair of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Big City Mayors Caucus. Uh, it is inspiring to have a federal government partner in Minister Sohi and in the Cabinet and in our Prime Minister who understand how to get money to the places it needs to be, which is in the communities where Canadians live, especially big cities where transit projects are going to have a massive impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, helping us build healthier and less congested cities and ultimately more globally competitive communities. But equally, the need to invest in water and wastewater uh, priorities for smaller communities. So the balance of investment is appreciated, if I may be so bold to speak on behalf of the many other municipal colleagues who are here. Equally so, it's great to see the provincial government is stepping up and putting a fair share on the table for Edmonton and other municipal partners, uh, given and despite the difficult fiscal position that Alberta finds itself in today. So signing this agreement indicates to me that the provincial and federal governments are willing to be partners in city building and in community building with local orders of government and First Nations. 
to create jobs and to improve quality of life and improve environmental outcomes. Infrastructure investments are critical to the success of communities, especially big cities across our country, and we can't build this nation unless we're working together, all four orders of government. And so on behalf of the people of Edmonton, my personal thanks to Minister Sohi and to Minister Mason for showing support for the needs of people in our community, and in, particularly in our metropolitan region, and supporting projects that will help us build out and maintain an effective transit network in particular. And to give you a couple of examples of that, we will be able to move ahead with a $27 million much needed uh, investment in the Heritage Valley Park and Ride. And if you've been reading about Park and Ride, you know how much demand there is uh, for not just Edmontonians, but regional users for that park and, those Park and Ride spaces, thousands of which will be built because of these generous partnerships. Leveraging the city's uh, ex existing investment that we would put down for land acquisition and planning by three to one to be able to actually build this project. Likewise, there's $30 million for growth buses, which again, the city of Edmonton would have had to pay 100 cents on the dollar for traditionally, but through this program, we're able to again leverage it three to one. And finally, I really want to acknowledge the federal government for three fundamental policy shifts with this new public transit infrastructure fund. And also one of these applies to the, the, uh, the green infrastructure fund. Shifting to 50 cents on the dollar finally recognizes the relative fiscal capacity of the three orders of government. And it also recognizes that municipalities typically bear 100% of the cost to operate and maintain this important infrastructure once it's been constructed. It also recognizes that the primary taxation benefits that accrue from this infrastructure stimulus accrue back to the senior orders of government, and in particular, the federal government. So we appreciate tremendously that shift in policy. It shows incredible leadership. And uh, Councillor Sohi formerly was a passionate advocate for that kind of change and is bringing that to Ottawa and bringing that to cities and communities across the country. So join me in thanking him for that. Specifically to the, uh, uh, to the transit fund, the two other policy changes from the federal government that are so significant and are embedded in this agreement today are eligibility for uh, state of good repair or renewal of the systems uh, that have already been built, and that is a critical need in uh, transit infrastructure across this country, and also eligibility for planning. So on the renewal side, Edmonton specifically, and other partners I'm sure will, but Edmonton specifically will benefit to the tune of $130 million worth of renewal investments in our transit system over the next couple of years. Now much of that we would have had to do anyway, but again, typically we've had to bear 100% of the cost of that. This will allow us to accelerate much needed work, improve conditions on our transit system, and create jobs, again, in a way that respects the fiscal capacity of the different orders of government. And so we're very grateful for the, in, the broadened eligibility to include a state of good repair and renewal of our infrastructure. And the one I want to close on is, is what uh, Minister Sohi touched on as well. Finally, the eligibility uh, to invest in planning which is the really exciting part of today, is not just this announcement, but where we go next from here. So our council has prioritized $90 million worth of planning activity over the next couple of years so that we can finalize the design and make truly shovel-ready the West LRT expansion to advance the design for expansion of the LRT into the northwest part of Edmonton and ultimately out into the region in St. Albert, to refine the design for the central area circulator uh, that would connect the north and south sides of the river and our post-secondary institutions and our great cultural and business districts throughout the city. So that planning dollars is very exciting, but of course it creates an expectation that we all share that we will continue to partner effectively to be able to actually build uh, all of the things that we're planning with this money. And in due course, based on the partnerships and the goodwill that we've seen from both uh, Minister Mason and from Minister Sohi, I'm quite confident that we'll have a lot of shovels in the ground for a long time as a result of today's announcement. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I now would like to invite Minister Sohi and Minister Mason to sign the agreement. This is a great example of all levels of government and stakeholders working together to improve transit and water systems for all Albertans.
Um, so this concludes the formal part of our announcement. The ministers will now be available to answer questions, and I invite John Archer to moderate on their behalf. Again, thank you all for coming. Thanks, Kevin. We'll just uh, wait for some of the media colleagues to get back in position before we start. We will have some media on the phone, so we will, uh, after taking some questions from the floor, we'll go to the phones, and then we'll probably come back to the floor after that. I would ask that you identify yourself and the outlet that you work for and which minister, or if you have questions for the mayor, uh, please let us know. But uh, otherwise, Vinesh? Yeah, Vinesh Pratap with uh, Global News. This is a question for Minister Sohi. Um, so there's been some, uh, some debate here about how funding is split. Uh, Mayor Don Iveson has indicated uh, for infrastructure he'd like to see a 50-40-10 uh, split. From the federal point of view, what do you think about that? Well, uh, you know, I think if we, if we came to uh, the conclusion of uh, uh, funding 50% of the cost in phase one, we did that in consultation with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, at the consultation with the big city mayors, as well as uh, uh, meetings that we had with smaller communities and uh, and municipal associations, different different provinces, uh, uh, different uh, provinces, right? Uh, uh, but we also recognized the uh, the uh, the how quick the federal dollars became available in in phase one and the and the budgeting cycle for provinces and uh, and the municipalities so we understand the flexibility that was required in uh, uh, in phase 1 uh, as far as the long term plan is concerned uh, uh, we will have discussion on this uh, when we meet with our uh, partners uh, uh, next week as well as on ongoing discussions with uh, with fcm and other stakeholders uh, uh, but we acknowledged uh, that uh, the federal government in the past has not been a partner in uh, uh, in the rehabilitation and the fixing of the existing infrastructure as well as not supporting the long term planning for for municipalities and those were the perspectives that I was able to bring to the table because of my own uh, municipal experience uh, and facing those challenges uh, 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 that every municipality faces uh, uh, so uh, you know uh, uh, we are happy that we are able to provide 50% of the support as well as uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, the commitment from uh, uh, Minister Mason and, the, uh, uh, and, uh, and his government as well as a commitment from all the municipalities uh, uh, throughout the province. Follow up, Finesh? No? Okay. Next. Uh, for Minister Sohi, so uh, when the Prime Minister was here in February, um, he mentioned $700 million in, in Building Canada money that had been um, previously allocated but not spent. Um, I don't think that's part of this announcement. Can you tell us when we'll see that, that money flow? You know, one thing that I came to realize when I took over this portfolio is that how poorly designed the old program, the Building Canada Fund, was. It has multiple layers of approval even for smaller projects would have taken uh, months and months for a simple project to get approved. So what we did, uh, we proposed some changes uh, and all those changes were approved by the Treasury Board in mid-May. And since May, I have uh, approved more projects within the last three months than we were able to do in the last three years under the Building Canada Fund. So those projects are coming. Uh, I have signed off on um, a few projects related to Alberta. There are more uh, that are under under review, and we have excellent relationship with uh, uh, Minister Mason's uh, uh, Mason's department. We share notes on a, on a, on a regular basis. Uh, uh, there might be more changes we might have to make to Building Canada Fund as we learn about it. So the the reason that you're seeing more resources coming into the community that were dedicated in budget 2016 is to the fact that we have designed this new plan to be so simple and straightforward that focusing on communities, not just focus, focusing on how we control dollars, but how do we actually invest those dollars. That's what you have seen. Signing 10 agreements with provinces and territories within the last three months 
only happened because we listened to each other. We listened to municipalities, we listened to provinces, and we listened to our indigenous leaders and designed this plan in a way that money actually get invested. And as far as the Building Canada Fund is concerned, we have made significant changes and we will see money flowing under that plan as quickly as possible as well. When the, when the Prime Minister announced that, that funding back in February, he sort of pitched it as something that would help boost an Alberta economy that needed a boost. Are you disappointed that you've missed an entire construction season with that money? Uh, some are, some projects are, have been approved, but smaller ones, right? Uh, there are projects that are underway. Uh, which were beyond, which were part of building Canada Fund. For example, the uh, the six hundred million dollars for uh, Calgary's Ring Road was approved under the uh, under the broader building Canada Fund, coming out of a set, which is on top of the seven hundred million dollar, which is a significant investment, I would say. Uh, as well as there are a number of other projects that we will be will be uh, 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 supported very soon. But going retroactive to April first of twenty sixteen. Uh, under the new plan was in the recognition that we should not lose a construction season. And there are projects on this list that have been uh, approved as part of this, this agreement that projects have been already started, which we are supporting. My question also for Minister Sohi, Michelle from CTV. Um, quite a few announcements here for Edmonton talking about LRT uh, expansion. When can residents start seeing uh, plans start seeing shovels in the ground. You're talking about creating jobs. What's the timeline and what can residents who live in the city expect to start to see changes? Well, we work in partnership with the municipalities and provinces. Uh, uh, they are the proponents uh, of the projects. They are the one who engage in the procurement uh, of those, uh, uh, those projects. Uh, uh, I, and I am hopeful that uh, uh, some of these projects that are already underway are creating jobs. And there will be other projects that will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, starting very, very soon this year or, or not next year. This is a two-year plan, right? Uh, uh, so we want to make sure that uh, the vast majority of this investment is actually made in, uh, in, in this year and the next year. And uh, as we roll our long-term plan, which will be the end of this year, uh, there will be some overlap between this, uh, this phase and the, and the long-term phase. But we have been... Uh, 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 very consistent in our approach with provinces to ensure that these uh, first phase resources, which is about uh, $10 billion uh, throughout the country, are invested in, uh, in this year and the next year. Uh, my question for Minister Mason. Um, I'm wondering if there's been any discussion with the federal government yet. I'll let you get to the podium. Um, about the funding formula for phase two, as we know, there's um, the provincial government is contributing less than traditionally uh, in these kind of agreements for this phase. I'm wondering if that's going to change for the next one. The uh, funding formula has uh, been set uh, for the current plan by the federal government, um, and there's no required provincial contribution in, in that cost sharing split. Um, I've looked up uh, what other provinces are doing and there's a mix of, of um, funding. Uh, some uh, provinces are contributing 33 uh, percent. A number are contributing 25 percent. There are a couple that are not contributing anything. Um, so that, that is uh, you know, the, the, the actual uh, funding formula in this plan. Now I know that this will be an issue at the upcoming uh, territorial, provincial and federal um, uh, meeting which we're hosting here in Edmonton uh, that Minister Sohi has organized and uh, we expect that that's going to be uh, a very important topic of discussion. Um, can you tell me when that's happening? Pardon me? Can you tell me when that's happening? What's the date? Next week. That's next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, sorry, Elise Stolte from the Journal. Um, sorry, my question is again for Minister Mason. I was just hoping to follow up with that and, and ask for any further reflections that you might have on whether the province will have the fiscal capacity to increase its contribution in phase two. Well, we need to, uh, we need to see where uh, the price of oil goes just to, to get right to the bottom line with respect to that. Um, we certainly would like to be as generous as possible to municipalities like uh, the, the mayor and uh, Minister Sohi, I, I share a municipal background and I understand that very expensive uh, projects in, in areas like social housing and, and um, 
uh, modern transit systems uh, are not affordable based on the property tax base that's available to municipalities. We recognize that. Um, uh, what we need to do, though, is balance that with our current fiscal capacity, which is quite a bit weaker than it was just a few years ago. Uh, we would like to be as generous as possible, uh, but we also have to take into account um, the fact that we need to manage the deficit uh, in this province, and, uh, uh, and, and that is a challenge for us, and uh, we're going to continue to work with the federal government and with our municipal partners uh, in order to make sure that as much money as possible can flow to municipalities for these important projects. Follow-up? Scott. Hi, Scott from Ched, and this is for Minister Sohi. It's a follow-up to Ryan's question about the Harper $700 million. What, on the, on the Harper $700 million, what's your top priority for an Edmonton project in that category? Well, here's Another example I can give you where we want to do things differently, right? Your federal government is not going to come to municipalities and tell them what their priorities should be. Priorities are determined by local councils and local communities. So $700 million or half a billion dollar for this announcement, we did not go to municipalities and tell them that uh, you include this, 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 and this, right? Because we work, we recognize the local autonomy. We like recognize that local governments are more attuned to local, local needs, and they're more able to identify those local needs and work in partnership with the, with the province and, and us. And whenever there are projects that come our way, we always communicate that with the, with the province and the municipalities when we hear from our MPs or uh, uh, from the communities directly on certain, uh, any particular projects, then we convey that to, uh, uh, that to, uh, to the provinces and, and local, local councils. I can tell you that uh, uh, our relationship with uh, uh, every province and territory, uh, with the AUMA here, with F, uh, FCM, uh, is, is very productive, and we try to reach consensus on uh, on many of these projects. That's exactly what we have have done on these projects. If Fair. you have a particular project, I don't know. So, yeah. Fair enough, but I'm sure you've seen city council's list. What are you agreeable to? Well, uh, absolutely, I have uh, seen. Uh, city's list. As a matter of fact, I think I, I, I was a city councillor not too long ago, right? And I have something to do, something to do with that list, right? So, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, and I understand those, uh, those, those priorities. I understand that uh, the, uh, the railway crossing on, um, on 50th Street uh, is, is number one priority for the, uh, for the city. I understand the Yellowhead is another area uh, that is priority of the city. Uh, and Brian and I are working very closely and uh, collaboratively on uh, on on Yellowhead. Uh, uh, we're just waiting for some information. Uh, once we get that information, we will take that project to the uh, uh, to the next uh, next stage. But at the speed we are approving projects or moving ahead with projects, I am uh, I am satisfied with uh, with that, and I'm satisfied with the relationship that we have uh, uh, have with uh, with Minister Mason's. Uh, um, is a uh, department as well as uh, uh, Mayor Avison's uh, uh, and, and, and City Council. We have time for one more from the floor. Uh, Minister Sohi, I just wanted to ask quickly about the Lakewood project. It's the only one missing from Edmonton. Sorry, which one? The Lakewood project is the only one missing from Edmonton's list that they submitted. Yeah. And yeah. I understand there was a conflict of interest. I was wondering if you could just explain. Well, you know, uh, uh, as a minister, I cannot approve projects in my own writing. Right, and Lakewood Transit Center happens to be in my uh, my own riding. It has to go through uh, through a to a, a different process of uh, of approval. What is that process? It goes to Treasury Board for for approval. I have never dealt with this before, right? So I'm learning as well. So, uh, uh, but I will not be signing it off because it's a, it's perceived to be a, a, a potential conflict because it happens to be in my my riding. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. We're going to uh, take a couple of uh, pictures now, um, if you wanted to stick around and uh, 
take pictures of that. But thank you very much, everybody, for coming this morning. <laughs>